What's up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now in this video we're going to talk about exactly how to study USMLE World, also called UWorld. Now UWorld is a resource, it's a question bank that almost everyone I would argue uses to study for USMLE 1, 2, 3. They also other, um, offer the QBanks for other things like your internal medicine boards, and I think they're coming out with MCAT. Um, so definitely a very widely used resource. Um, but the question becomes, well, how can you use UWorld effectively? When should I start using it? How do I use it once I do start using it? Um, and how do I then kind of take the information from UWorld and think about my own personal performance on the actual steps exams? Now, number one, I can't unfortunately like record the screen on how I do UWorld because UWorld is insanely copywritten. I don't work for UWorld, they give me no benefit, um, and I don't feel like being sued for like showing their screen. Um, for anyone that has ever used UWorld, you know that if you can't even copy and paste when it's open, and you know, if you take a picture with your computer, they like freak out, so insanely copywritten material, we're not even going to touch it. So just follow along with me. If you have UWorld, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't, you know, you, you'll start using it and you can come back to this video and see how to do it. So the first question is, well, when do you start using UWorld? Um, do I use it the first week of medical school? Do, do I wait until the very end when I'm about to take step? When, what should I do? Okay, don't obviously use it at all during first year. Um, I mean, it would be really odd. A lot of the U world is focused on like multiple systems. And by the end of first year, realistically, you're just not there. So I kind of wait until second year because that's when you're learning pathology, pharmacology, micro, the core of where the question stems are going to be pulling from. So during the second year, it's much more an applicable time for you to be using UWorld. Really, I recommend it just a couple months out from your actual test date. In my mind, UWorld is like gold. Um, so one, you don't want to use it too early when you don't know enough material because then you're kind of wasting it. But you also don't want to wait too late because UWorld is still a question bank, not a test bank. It's not there to test your material, your knowledge and like give you a grade. It's there to push you with questions to learn and know how to take the test um, and over time of course you'll do better but don't use UWorld like a you know I got to study a ton and then I got to take UWorld and then I'll know how I'm doing no um, you have to obviously study well during your first year and study well during your second year but then now is about the time you should start using UWorld right now it's February at the end of February going into March this is when most people in the US are going to start kind of transitioning into the UWorld time we're kind of getting more serious about their step one study. Um, I did make a video called like core resources and how to set up a study plan for step one. So link down below to that. But this one, we're going to talk about really how to use it. So say you're a couple months out. This is a good time to start using UWorld. By this time, hopefully you've, you've used like video lectures like Lecturio to kind of follow along with med school to help you learn things. Maybe use something like Osmosis to kind of give you a schedule. Uh, maybe use Kaplan videos to watch along. Or maybe you're reading uh, Rapid Review Goleon or reading Big Blue Robins. Whatever, you know, you were using a ton of resources. Now comes the time of using UWorld. You're like, okay, a couple months out from step at this point, what am I going to do with UWorld? Well, here it is. I don't agree. Personally, again, it's my biased opinion. If you don't like it, okay, you know, but just think about it. Um, but I kind of like my opinion and most people like it as well. And I think I learned it from other people and I support it. And that's always do you world in proper test taking mode. The whole like tutor mode or untime mode, I don't like them. I don't think they're of value because if you take all of your QBank in timed full block modes of random questions, the beauty is you're always getting your brain ready for the real test, you know? Because if you do say untimed mode or tutor mode, and you're like just doing the question, thinking about it, dilly-dallying around, that's not realistic. You know, on actual test day, you have, they're gonna show you the question, you only have so many X number of you know seconds to take it, uh, a little over, a little less than a minute, and that's it. Um, you can't sit there and dilly-dally, so you don't want to really train yourself the wrong way. So when I say, when you're actually doing a block, do it always real. And that means timed questions, not tutor mode, but real test mode, and timed, not untimed, and always click like all questions that you have left that you haven't used, and all subjects. 
Don't just pick heart, don't just pick kidney or OB, whatever. Always everything. Because that's how the real test is. It's one question after another and there's, you know, some of it's micro, some of it's farm, some of it's a couple things mixed. It's real life. So you want to get yourself trained to always be thinking like test mode. And okay, that's how I feel about it. But what about when you're going through questions? Now this is where I think people should be using this concept of tutor and untimed. So you log into UWorld in the morning, you say, okay, everything, timed mode, real test mode, a full block, put in, you know, for step one, 46 questions, for step three, 40 questions, and hit start, and do that hour of questions, that full block in real test time. Go in a room, close the door, tell people like, hey, for the next hour, I'm doing a block, don't bother me, don't walk in, hey, can I guess you, qu no, I'm in block mode, I'm doing a U world. Uh, don't, you know, and put your phone on quiet in a separate room. You know, like during that hour, you are in full you world thought. And the rationale behind that is because that's how you want to start training yourself. When you do a block, your brain's like, I'm full force on this. Because um, that's how you want to do it. And also you get the most out of it. Because once you do a block, you do it and it's over. And now comes the real yield of doing you world. And that's going through all the questions now, all the explanations. And now you can go through it. But the value of doing the block properly and doing it un uh, interrupted, timed, full block questions, random questions is now that you go through it, you have something meaningful to go through. And what I mean by that is you can't, you know, go through it and get a question wrong and say, well, that's when the phone went off or that, that's when the coffee pot started making noise. or that's when someone came and interrupted me. No go. Those are extra variables that aren't, you know, you don't want those in your studies. So take those out so you don't have extra crap in there to disturb your thought process and trying to figure out why you got questions right or wrong. So get those extra variables out. I'm being kind of strict about it, but trust me, it's my third time doing your world now. I've kind of seen the benefit of it. Just follow, you know, it makes sense too. Following a strict schedule kind of makes sense when it comes to this. Now comes explanation time. You did the hour view world block. People didn't bother you. You focused. You got whatever score you got, okay? You did great, congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back. You didn't, oh well, who cares? Time to learn is my point. However you did, UWorld's not there to test you, UWorld's there to push you to learn and learn how to take the uh, standardized test. Because UWorld has the whole, you know, it looks just like the actual test, the questions are written a lot like it. Some people say UWorld's harder than the real thing, I don't know, but it's good for it. Um, so now, you know, it, you're, you've got UWorld open, you did the block, got up, you got yourself a cup of coffee or something, you're like, time to go through this thing. How long is it gonna take me, a few minutes? No, a few hours, okay? Kinda of get ready for that. It takes people on average two to six hours to go through, read, look up stuff, really get through a block. And why I say two to six is because it takes most people four and some people are fast and some people are slow. But you have your computer, you have UWorld open, you pick question one, you click explanation, and it shows the question, it shows all the answers, it shows what you picked, it shows what was the right answer, and then it gives you an explanation of the learning point why everything else was wrong and some kind of learning objective at the bottom. Now at this point, if you're studying for step one, you're gonna have a book next to you. I recommend uh, first aid for step one. If it's step two, I recommend uh, step up to step two or master the boards for step two, though at the same. Um, for step three, master the boards for step three or step up to step three. Um, some people use first aid for step three. Just pick a book for step two or step three. For step one, I just like first aid because it's kind of consistent. Um, but you have that one book and you have UWorld and I would call that the golden two right there because you're gonna sit there and you're gonna read the UWorld question. The first thing you gotta figure out is, okay, if I got it right, how did I get it right? Did I just know it? Did I kind of guess? Did I strategize by eliminating answers? What did I do? You gotta figure out what happened. Um, just learning the material is not enough because then you're only really studying for half the test, which is the knowledge part. Of course, you gotta know the knowledge. But the other part is, and this is like the big struggle I had for step one that kind of like stressed me out and then I figured it out and then step two and three got a little better and that's that you, you're studying for the, an exam as well. You know, you need to learn test taking strategy. How to like read the bottom paragraph, then the answers and then read the actual paragraph itself. Um, how to eliminate things that are similar, etc. There's a lot of that goes into this and you'll pick up your own strides 
when you start asking yourself, not only what are they teaching me about medicine or science, but also, well, how could I got that right? What was the question really asking? What words did I miss? Because um, oftentimes it'll say, what's the next best step? What's the best diagnostic test? Um, what would you, you know, and if you really pay attention to the question, a lot of times you're going to go, oh, I, I answered the wrong question, or I didn't pay attention to something, or they put something in it that I missed. And these are tr uh, like habits or traits that you need to pick up. What are you doing um, with respect to just taking the test um, that you need to kind of learn from? And I've learned, this is my own style, I read like the last sentence of the paragraph to say, to see what they're asking me. Are they asking me what's the diagnosis? Are they asking me um, what's the best nest diagnostic test? Are they asking me um, what is the next step in management? Are they asking me what's, you know, what would you tell the patient? Whatever it is, I kind of know, okay, this is what they want me to do. I quickly scan the answer choices, like, okay, there's some stuff there, matches the question, and then I start reading it quickly. You know, I don't just start from the top and work my way down. That, to me, was a strategy that didn't work for me, um, and that you'll learn. And then you'll learn how to, like, cancel off things that are too similar or Whatever, you know, these are all strategies you'll learn over time. But that's what I want you to do with the explanation. When it comes to the actual question, ask yourself, how are they writing the questions? What is where? Where was stuff you keep missing, etc.? Because you need to learn how these step questions are organized and how you can break through them. Um, and this is kind of a thing that if it's if you're brand new to the standardized world, congratulations, this is an, an annoying part of it and it's taking the test itself. Now it comes to the actual content. Um, where about you're learning the actual science and medicine. Now, as you're going through it, you're going to get stuff wrong, and you know, you'll, or you get it right, and you see the explanation. You read that carefully. Um, U World will not let you print. You can't copy and paste it. You just got to look at it right there on the screen. And you read it, and like you open up your book, that one book we're talking about, and you let go when you write stuff notes from U World into it. If it's a topic that you know like nothing about, and you're like, oh man, I'm totally confused, what is that? You guys are looking stuff up. Um, so if you have like a resource bank that makes it easy for you, um, if you're in step one world, um, say you have like Lecturio, you can just type in the word and a video will pop up and it'll teach you that quickly and then you can get it. Um, if you had like a book that you loved for that topic, um, say you have like Rapid Review Goleon, you just go look into there, or Micro Made Simple, whatever you got that's good for you, Use that. If you don't have it somewhere, uh, that's why I like having a video bank nearby because you can just type it in and watch a quick video. Um, for step one, Lecturio does that. For step two, um, Lecturio does it. And I think a couple other companies does it as well. For step three, I have no videos. Oh well. Uh, but at this point, I just have to go with the flow. Um, but again, it's up to you. Just use whatever resource to kind of pull in the material. But whatever resource you use, Put that into your one book. So if it's step one, write it into first aid. Take the Lecturio video content, write it into first aid. Um, if you had goalie on there, write whatever it is into first aid. The purpose being then your one book that goes along with UWorld becomes like your golden coins. It contains the book, whatever notes you wrote in there from other sources, and whatever notes UWorld has. Now when you review that book, it's like all the stuff's right in there. That's really, really high yield. Uh, and you composed it, so you're familiar with it. So that's how you go through the questions. And it'll take time to go through. And that's just how you do the part of the actual question itself, right or wrong. Then comes all the other options that were not correct. You have to read all of those. And the rationale behind that is, these are great learning opportunities. The specific question that you just answered in UWorld um, you know, had a specific answer. But they could easily reword the question so one of the incorrect answer now becomes the right answer. So when you're reading about a topic, you want to kind of also read carefully all the other wrong answers because those are also great learning opportunities. So a UWorld question is not just that one question, it's also everything that's wrong as well. And if you're not familiar with one of those, well, guess what? That question just got longer to go through. Now you got to look up more stuff. You got to put more notes in your book. But that's the fun of it. That's why U World's good. It's not just a Q bank you do and you carry on. It's so interactive. You do the Q bank in full question bank mode. You're learning how to take a test. You're learning the material. You're learning all the questions that were wrong for that question. You're constantly around in resources. And if you think about it, it's a very good interactive, active way to study. With questions, it's like fun, it's interactive, it's a challenge, you're reading, you're composing stuff, it's like a task. I mean, that's a good way to learn. And then you do that for all the questions in the block. And yeah, if you do questions, you know, if you go through each question, but this detail, it takes time. And of course, that's the whole two to six hours 
per block or about four hours on average because it takes time to do. You know, doing two blocks a day, doing UWorld well, that's a good way to learn. So that's how I do UWorld. I have it, I always do it in full, like test taking mode, no one interrupts. I spend a couple hours going through each block properly, looking at multiple resources if I don't know something. And if you know it and you totally got it, then carry on, don't waste your time. Um, you know, full review, also reviewing, um, test taking strategy, try, and that's up to you, you gotta really try there. Um, how to figure out how the questions are written, and how you can do better with just strategy alone, and getting comfortable with that, uh, you know, USMLE, wording style. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, we're very strict here on how to do UWorld. There really are techniques of how people do it. Uh, this is how I did it. It's how a lot of people who are older than me that taught me how to do UWorld did it. Uh, it's how I've taught other people to do UWorld and they've done well. Um, so again, my bias and never humble, humble recommendations of how to do things. Uh, but if it works for you, good. I'm glad. You know, I hope it helps you and it helps you, helps you do really well in school and you kick a button in UWorld and you carry on with life. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay as well. Just take this as a recommendation. If, if you're like, well, that doesn't work for me, all right, I'm sorry it didn't work. Talk to someone else or figure out another way that works for you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it answers a lot of those questions on how to do UWorld. If you have any questions or comments down below in the comment section, jump onto our Facebook group where the community answers each other's questions. And as always, enjoy your studies.